Now, supposedly I'm live. So, um, I know there's no one watching right now, but if you're catching this on the rerun, which probably no one is, uh, I am currently how far out? Um, do 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 do. Uh, about 14,000 light years from the start on my way to Colonia scanning some planets and stuff on the way but um, it's mostly sightseeing you know there's no one but me out here uh, I've seen some pretty cool stuff um, I'm gonna be using neutron stars to boost my frameshift drive where I can. Uh, I've got 93 jumps to the next system where I'm holding up. Next leg of my journey, 93 jumps. It's probably going to take a while. So anyway. <laughs> um, decided to start here first system I'm going to jump into is a neutron star system so I'm going to supercharge my frameshift drive and um, we'll take it from there um, I'm flying an ASP Explorer um, it's got a well it's got a 5B frameshift drive on it so it's not amazingly well it's not as fast as it could be I'd like to be able to outfit it with a 5A, so um, at the moment my jump range is about 25 light years per jump. Um, with the Class A frameshift drive, uh, that will extend to, uh, well, about 35-ish. Um, but if I supercharge my frameshift drive with the uh, um, neutron cones, then my jump range is just over a hundred light years. Or so here we go. sight of neutron stars, especially when you jump in right next to them. Some of them are really angry as well. There it is. Neutron star. Quite a lot of stuff in this system. Let's check it out. Mm. Yeah, it's mostly rocky balls. Probably not worth, not worth much. So. Let's fly into that neutron cone. Here we go. That wasn't enough. Cool. So now, 
we're jumping 103 light years in one go. Okay, what we got here? Red Dwarf Star. Let's see. Not much else in system. Are you real? I think I'm real. But then, how do you know that anyone's real? How do you know that you're real? Most people could be a figment of your imagination. You might be a figment of someone else's imagination. How can you be sure that anything, anything you see is real? Maybe I'm just CGI. Big up the weed squad. Yes, may maybe not. Maybe not big up the weed squad. Um, Eiling Deval, Princess of the Empire, frowns on all drug use. So, um, and she's a powerful woman, you know. I wouldn't argue with Eiling Deval. Whoa, God, that's flying too close to the sun. Like Icarus. That teach me for not actually paying attention. Oh god, right. I'm gonna start overheating now. Oh, I've gotta wait for my frame shift drive to cool down. Hello, sir, this is Thomas Behain, says Michelle Tennant. Interesting. Uh, so, obviously, survival tips. Um, if you're flying close to the sun, uh, don't actually... Don't take your eyes off the ball. Uh, I'm going to get totally cooked now. Here we go. Ah, good old Felix Cashelberg. Where would we be without him, eh? Where? Just can't answer that. Cannot answer that. Uh, right. Well, that's that's that. Let's head to the next system. How many jumps we got left? Ninety jumps. It's gonna it's gonna take a long time to get there. Long time. <laughs> Did you sort out those mycotoxins uh, case? Did you sort them out? Have you? Did you finish that job? This is Jamaican jerk rice. Very tasty. Very easy to make. A 
would um, I would make a video with the recipe, but probably never hear the end of it. Um, do I, I didn't finish that honk. I'm getting lax here. Yeah, weed's not just bad, it's, it's pretty retarded. You know. That's pretty cool, binary system. I am the first person to ever be here, so I'm going to scan these two stars. So I can claim extra credit for them. And then, whenever anyone visits this system, they will see that I was here before them. Uh, biggest jump that I can do. The biggest jump that I can do... Um, in this ship, like I said earlier, um, I haven't got the best frame shift drive in the ship, but I, it's pretty decent. I can jump um, about 25 light years per jump, but if I supercharge my uh, frame shift drive in a in the cone of a neutron star or a white dwarf, uh, I can hit maybe 105 light years tops. Um, First system I jumped into on this stream was a was a neutron star system. Uh, I've set my nav computer to uh, favor routes with neutron stars. Um, it's less fuel efficient, but it gets me there quicker. Uh, so uh, hopefully you'll see some neutron stars on the way. Um, bit of astronomy there for you. Those two clouds that you can see there are the uh, Magellanic Clouds. Um, you can't see them from the Northern Hemisphere, but if you go to the Southern Hemisphere, look at the sky, uh, like Africa, Australia, look up, you can see them. They are two dwarf galaxies which are orbiting our own galaxy. All of the stuff that's in this game is like, it, it's based on real life, so uh, that's pretty awesome. Biggest jump I can do vertically with no shoes on. Um, I don't know, are we talking height or length here? I don't know. How do I know all of what? How do I know about astronomy? This is a really interesting subject, and I've read loads of books about it, and I've spent a long, long time looking at the stars. Um, height. Uh, are we talking the, the height that I could get off the ground, like head height or leg height, so I could lift my legs up, like, you know, up to my body. Um, so. He is a genius. Well, it, uh, it's a blessing and a curse, being a genius, let me tell you that. Right, that's that system scanned. Let's head to the next one. Do, 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 do. So you see this bright line here. That's the disk of the Milky Way. I'm actually, uh, if I, in fact, I'm just going to kill the engines and show you guys the galaxy map so you can see uh, where I am right now. If I just zoom out of the uh, of the galaxy map, Whoa! so here is the galaxy, the known, the known galaxy. Um, there's actually 400 billion uh, star systems that you can actually visit in the game. Uh, someone did the, the math, they calculated that if you visited, if you were to visit every single system in the game and spend five minutes there, it would take you three and a half million years to complete that task. Um, so, as you can see, I've come quite a long way. This is, this is where I am right now. Um, the Sol system, as in our solar system, uh, is round here somewhere. Uh, there's Maya. Uh, it's round here. Where the hell's Sol? Have I not bookmarked Sol? That seems a bit stupid, doesn't it? Uh, oh, there's there's the Sol system there. Okay, so most of inhabited space in the game uh, takes up um, this area here, pretty much. That's that's the extent of inhabited space. Uh, Vy Canis Majoris, one of the biggest stars in the galaxy, um, and that exists in real life as well. Um, that's about 1500 light years from Sol. Um, where I'm trying to get to at the moment is Colonia. It's the furthest uh, outpost of mankind. It's here. It's about 25,000 light years from Sol. Um, so that's 
that is where I'm headed. Um, it's a long way to go. Once I once I get there, I'm hoping to be able to upgrade my ship. I want to make it over here, Sagittarius A star. Uh, at the center of the galaxy, there is a supermassive black hole there. So um, hoping to hoping to visit that. So you can see I've I've made a few stops on on this journey. Um, there's a number of different um, like just tiny little outposts really where I where I refuel, sell some exploration data, and then and then move on. My current hop is from Gagarin Gate, um, which is in the uh, GRU Hypu KST D331 system. It's a bit of a mouthful. Uh, I'm going to uh, oh god, what's it called now? Um, I did write down my itinerary here. Uh, Polo Harbour is the next stop, uh, which is in that bounced K S S C twenty nine five nine um system. So uh it's probably gonna take a, an hour or so to get there. Uh from there there's uh the final leg of the journey is about three thousand light years, probably gonna be about hundred and twenty to hundred and fifty jumps to get over there, and then once I'm here, um well, I'll be sort of back to civilization, I guess. Um so, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Is there any story to this game? Um, sort of. The, the story is the story that you create yourself, really. Um, so I have a blog. Uh, I go adventuring uh, and I, uh, I write about it on my blog. Um, and um, all the player's actions sort of shape what happens in the... Uh, to the ongoing story, so it's not a, it's not a story that you sort of actively take part in, I guess. Um, although it is, it's difficult to describe. Everyone's always taking part in the story, but you're not like a significant lead character, if that makes sense. Because obviously the galaxy is a big place, and there's a few hundred thousand people playing the game. There's obviously millions of people in the human race. And um, but based on player actions, different things happen in the game and uh, and stuff like that. It's it's in my mind, it's the purest form of sandbox game. There's a lot of people don't like it because they're like, oh, there's no point. There's no story. It's like, well, you create your own story, just like in real life, you create your own story. So um, so that do I have a girlfriend or a wife? No, I do not have a girlfriend or a wife. Um, so, uh, there you go. Bizarre question. I don't remember if I actually honked or not. No. What a lonely system this is. Okay, let's get the hell out of here. Uh, I just need to scoop some fuel. I'll be your waifu. Can you play with friends? Yes, you can. Um, so uh, there's multiple modes of play. You can play solo play. It's obviously just you in the galaxy. Uh, you can play open play, which is you and everyone else that's in open play. Uh, or you can you can play in a private group group mode. So you can um, uh, you can say. Um, uh, you know, if you and a few of your mates just want to play and you don't want interference from other people, then you can. Now, the economy, the the, the economy in game, because obviously you trade goods across the galaxy and things like that. Um, that economy is a live economy, uh, and it's determined by the uh, the trades that players are doing. So even if you play solo, you're still subjected to the economy uh, as impacted by everyone else playing the game. So um, yeah. It, GG's right there. You can't play with friends unless you have them, uh, which is why I normally play on my own. Aha! What is it? I keep stopping the system scan. Too impatient. That's what it is. How much is the game? Good question. Um, 
they often have it in sales and stuff like that. So, um, uh, it is on Steam. Um, you can buy the base game. I think it's probably about ten of these days. Uh, although you'll probably want the Horizon Season Pass if you want to be able to land on planets. Uh, oh, it's an unexplored system. Um, I'll tell you what. Do you want to land on a planet? Let's go. Let's go land on this planet here. I'll be your waifu. Hmm. Right now, Eileen Duval is my waifu. Oh no! Again, I wasn't paying attention. I'm going too fast now. I'm going to have to do the loop of shame. If you come in on approach to a planet and you're going too fast, you'll either smash into the planet or you have to wave off and loop around. It's known as the loop of shame. Because you should have been more on the ball. <laughs> what on earth are you guys talking about in the chat there? Right, okay, so we scan this planet. Let's uh, just want to check the uh, gravity because I don't really want to be. Flying into uh, oh, gravity is 0.3 g. We should be fine. Uh, let's slow down a bit. So, where are we gonna where are we gonna park up here? Well, there's plenty of craters all up in this planet. Planetoid, I should say. It's not... So, here we go. We are currently... About 500 kilometers from the surface. Once we get down to about 40 kilometers, we drop through atmospheric flight and enter glide mode. I think I might be coming in too fast. No, I'm doing all right. Doesn't look very blue. Uh, no, it's not blue. It's brown. You find most of the planets are... Well, see, you can only land on planets that have no atmosphere, and so they're mostly like dead rocks. You can find some cool stuff there though. Um, Alright, here we go. Should be dropping out of orbital flight any second and entering glide. There we go. Now we just nicely glide down to the surface, find somewhere to land and then we can go Ooh, wait a second, there's a POI! Oh god, where's that? No, no, no! No! Ugh. Right. Oh, I'm probably not going to find that POI now, and I nearly just completely stacked the ship, uh, so maybe that was a bad idea. Um, but anyway, uh, if you see the big, sometimes on the radar you see like big blue circles. Um, and if you land near them, there's a, you can usually find some cool stuff, either minerals to harvest or uh, sometimes you might find alien ruins, crashed spaceships. Those are very rare. I've never found any. Other people have found them. Yeah, okay, so I, I messed up that approach, but... Let's get a bit closer to the surface. I 
should have just ignored that POI, that's messed up my whole approach now. I have to keep boosting down to the surface. How far away are we? Four kilometers. Uh, my official comment before arrival on this planet. Um, oh! We have a point of interest over here. Right, so the little blue things on the radar, they indicate that there's something interesting around here. It's probably going to be a mineral deposit, if I'm honest. So I'm just going to kill the engines. swing back round. Oh, there we go. Just gonna try and get in the middle of the middle of the circle here. Right, that'll do. I've gone, I've overshot it again. So, let's drop the landing gear. Spin around, that'll maybe do. Okay. So, somewhere down here, there's something of interest. Um, we're still two kilometres from the surface, so. So, when we land, we will get out the rover, and then we will have to use its spectral analysis radar thing. I can't remember what it's actually called. See if we can find anything of interest. Suitable terrain. Go on. That'll do. There we go. Touchdown on the planet. So let's just. Deploy the scarab. And let's see if we can find this interesting thing. Landing speech. Um, didn't we have a lovely time the day we went to that uh, undiscovered planetoid in the Nukai PJYB4412 system? Right, so I'm going to try following this radar blippage. Not actually sure if we're going to 
find anything here. Well, it certainly looks like there's lots of rocks. Oh, what's that over there? Uh, yeah, it's a it's a rock deposit. So let's smash that rock deposit to pieces. Maybe pick up some of the materials. Um, help if I could actually target the damn thing. Oh, it's over over the crest of a hill. Let's activate the jump jets. That was a mistake, wasn't it? There we go, there's the... Uh, so, blow up that big rock deposit and you can see it's like smashed into these tiny bits of ore. Carbon ore. So I'm going to deploy my cargo scoop and just drive over it. There we go. New material discovered. Woo! Um, and with that, I can go back to my spaceship and continue on our journey. Uh, it's like Forza Motorsport. Forza Elite Dangerous Horizons. Okay, so let's get back on board the high digger. And uh, let's board the ship. Anyway finish eating this rice before we take off. I don't really want to linger much in this system. Bear. What's your Steam name? No idea. system. Just a star in the system. Let's scan it and move on. Um, yeah, let's finish scooping this fuel. So, um, those of you that aren't aware, what I'm doing here when it says fuel scooping, I'm um, skimming the atmosphere of the star um, and scooping off the hydrogen. Um, main sequence stars are uh, generally uh, stars that burn helium and hydrogen. Hydrogen is used for fuel for the um, uh, frame shift drive. So. Um, uh, so yeah, as you get further out of the outpost, get more frontier-like. Um, to be honest, as you get f once you're outside of the bubble, there's no 
outposts. There's only these few that I'm checking into on the way to Colonia. Uh, and yeah, they are very frontier-like. When we when we get there, you will see um, you'll see what they look like. Um, I don't know what Colonia's like. I've no idea. I haven't. I, I've no. I'm not checked it. Because the whole point of this is exploration. If I knew what it was like before I started, then you know, where would be the fun in that? No, oh, I didn't finish scanning. See the solar prominence is there. Big arcs of stellar matter caught in the magnetic fields of the uh, of the star. I saw something really awesome the other day, which I didn't realise was actually in the game. I saw a coronal mass ejection, um, which is um, like a solar flare, if you like. It's uh, a massive jet of um, like stellar matter. Uh, ejected from the star and flung out millions of miles into space. Uh, I didn't realise it was in the game, um, and I witnessed one right in front of my ship, uh, which was pretty awesome. Uh, it's one of the things I like about the game is that it's um, it's all. It, I mean, it, even after a year, it's still like you know throwing out those little surprises, nice little touches, and stuff like that. Uh, right, there seems to be quite a few planets in this system. Well, I didn't need to zoom in that fast, but uh, do, do, do. these are all unexplored as well. But um, I'm only really because I'm I'm kind of in a hurry to get where I want to go. So I'm only really going to scan if I see um, Earth-like planets, which are very very rare, um, or water planets, uh, or ammonia planets. I might scan those. But for m the most part, or maybe a um, high metal content planet in an unexplored system. But for the most part, I just want to get to this uh, get to this location. Let's see where we're at there. What have we got here? Again, another unexplored system. A few gas giants there. Oh, hello. What's this? Oh, no. I thought that was a... Um, looked like it could be a water world, but I don't think it is. Oh, look. A brown dwarf. Um, kind of similar to Jupiter, almost. Um, if Jupiter was uh, a, few, uh, a few times bigger than it is... Uh, it might have become a brown dwarf, which is kind of like a, almost like a star. It's kind of halfway between a um, a gas giant like this and a uh, and a star. It's like doesn't quite have the uh, doesn't quite have the mass to um, uh, actually start fusing on a grand scale. Um, it's quite a lot of brown dwarfs. Why you never give Steam name? Hmm, I wonder why. That's like saying, hey, why don't you give out your address? Why is there 106 jumps now? That's messed up. I'm going to have to replan my route. Galaxy map and sort of. It's probably when I went to the galaxy map to show you guys where I was going. It recalculated the route in the wrong way. Stupid thing. Yeah, why? Why do I never give out my home address? That's weird, isn't it? Um, it's almost as if I don't want people to have it. How odd. Uh, right, let's go to the um, galaxy map. Do do. I uh, want to make sure we're using the uh, Jet Corner Booster. Da -da 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 -da, is that re Ah, there we go. We can see in a few jumps' time, we're going to have a neutron star. Um, maybe 10 jumps or so. You can see that, that blue line. Uh, that is 
a supercharged jump. So we're gonna we're gonna do the old neutron star supercharge jumper jumper Rooney. Um, that's not the official name for it. That's my name for it. Um, no one, no one uses that that term. Um, do, 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 do. Let's scan this. What is a neutron star? A neutron star is the the remnants uh, of a star which has uh, supernovae. It's kind of like uh, if the star wasn't massive enough to um, collapse into a black hole, it collapses into a neutron star. Uh, basically, when the star runs out of fuel, um, uh, there's no longer enough um, uh, energy to support all of the, the, the matter. It gradually expands and expands and expands and then there's a core collapse where there's not enough energy to uh, support the uh, the sheer mass of the star and all of the matter collapses into the middle and then you get this massive explosion called a supernova. Um, and then um, everything gets sort of like compressed down. A neutron star is... Um, it's They often weigh several times the mass is several times that of the sun but the actual size of it is uh, several times smaller than the earth uh, so the gravitational uh, uh, pull of a neutron star is ridiculous they spin really really fast and um, they're very 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 dense um, objects uh, now in game they look pretty beautiful as well um, and so uh, you see these big uh, magnetic jet streams coming off because they're spinning around really fast and they're, they, uh, they're, they're throwing off all of this, this matter in two big long corkscrew plumes so okay Uh, I just took a picture of my cat, and I'm going to upload it to a website that tells you what kind of cat you have. I wonder what breed it will be. Um, is is that not a, a, a s interesting? It's an interesting thing. I'm not a fan of cats. Uh, I'm also against the concept of pet ownership, which uh, makes a lot of people think I'm kind of weird. But you know. Uh, a strong advocate of freedom, and that goes for animals as well as humans. Right, what have we got here? Anything exciting? Um, it's an unexplored system. What's that? No, that's just an icy ball. Um, no, all pretty boring planets, so I'm not going to bother scanning those. You'll notice there's only 79 jumps now that I refactored in to um, uh, allow for supercharged frameshift drives. There's only 79 jumps, so we've saved ourselves 30 jumps. Teach you more, please. Well, what would you like to know more about? That's the question, isn't it? Uh, so the next system is a red dwarf. <laughs> There are a number of main sequence stars that you can scoop fuel from in the game. Uh, they are the uh, K-class stars, the G-class stars, the B-class stars, the F-class stars, the O-class stars, the A-class stars, and the M-class stars. The other stars you cannot scoop from. Um, which means, if you're doing a long haul journey, basically the only way that you're going to be able to refuel is from scooping from stars. So if you find yourself out of fuel and in a system that doesn't have uh, one of those scoopable stars, you are pretty much going to die. Um, so, there's that. I want to learn about lucid dreaming. Okay, that's a... School teaches nothing about astronomy. Uh, that's true, it's a shame, really. Uh, astronomy's great. Uh, although, do you not? You learn about astronomy and physics, surely. Uh, I'll be disappointed if you don't. 
Um, um, obviously, I'm I'm really really far away from the uh, from our solar system. Uh, if I was in, if I was closer, I'd fly to Sol and give you a tour of the uh, tour of the solar system, so you can see all the different planets. Um, we might encounter some stars that have real names, but uh, probably not. They're mostly down the other end of the galaxy. Um, do you know about the constellations like Orion? Um, the constellation Orion uh, is one of the most recognisable in the night sky. Uh, it's got like three stars forming the belt, and then you've got another two stars there and two stars there. Um, one of those stars, the one in the top left, um, is a, uh, a supergiant, red supergiant, called Betelgeuse. Uh, I visited it in-game, and it's absolutely immense. It's not as big as VY Canis Majoris, but it's a huge, huge star. Um, there's th that's a star which is uh, approaching the end of its life. So, what do we got here? Okay, gas giant. We've got some stars. High metal content world, by the looks of things. That looks interesting. Uh, 69,000 light seconds away though, that's going to take a long time to get there, so yeah, I'll scratch that maybe maybe another time. Let's scoop this fuel though. Can you go here on another stream? What does that mean? I don't know what that means. Oh, getting a little bit cooked. Engage friendship drive. Here we go. <laughs> well, here we go. Into hyperspace or which space? You'll notice that I can't actually view any of my systems while I'm flying through um, hyperspace. Can you stream all night? I'll, I'll be here until I get to where I'm supposed to be going. Um, so, let's scan this star. Oh, we have 11 objects in system. What have we got here? Oh, kind of looks like Mars, doesn't it? You know what? Seeing as no one's been here before, I'm going over to there to the register the planet. Let's let's go check it out. How long will it be? <laughs> as long as it takes, I don't know. I've got. Uh, 76 jumps. If I was just to jump and jump and jump and jump, or jump and honk and jump and honk, jonk, if you like, um, it takes about a minute per jump, but obviously I'm not just doing that, so uh, it's going to be at least a couple of hours, I would have thought. Are you in that super chair from that one video? I am indeed in that super chair from that one video. I don't know if you can see it. I've got my throttle on this side, I've got my um, uh, joystick on this side. I can lean back in the chair. Yeah, thanks for that, Eddie Van Halen. It's a high metal content world. That's going to be worth a fair amount. Let's uh, let's just check out the specs on this thing. 
Surface pressure, 822 atmospheres. That's um, pretty, pretty crushing. It looks pretty cool though, doesn't it? Why is Patreon a dirty word now? I mean, I could get a Patreon, but I can't imagine anyone wanting to give me money just to watch me play video games. It seems ludicrous. You see the little the the blue glow around the planet. That's that's the uh, the atmosphere refracting the light from the sun. Oh man. It's not possible to land on planets with um, with atmosphere, so um, I can't can't land on that and show you. They decided to screw over people who donate small amounts of money. In what in what way? Come on, it's spill spill the beans, Lorcan. It's only pronounced Patreon if you're American. You don't say patronize, do you? You say patronize. Yeah, but you know why it's called Patreon, right? Because it's it's a it's a system of patronage. That's that's where it comes from. And also, I, if if it turns out that uh, saying Patreon pisses people off, obviously I'm going to say that, aren't I? Oh, what a lonely system. Right, how many jumps we got left? We've got 75 jumps. Let's go. Scoop this fuel. In the old system, once a month, the person with the account would get a payment for Patreon minus handling fees. Uh, don't I'm not I'm not saying that word, GG. I'm not saying it. Uh, the new system they're implementing means they take like five percent from the content provider, but the person who pays in pays something like thirty-five cents plus two percent extra. Wait, so who who gets who gets dicked over? Is it the guy paying or is it the guy receiving the money? Binary star system. Look at that. That's pretty awesome. In fact, let's go to external camera. Let's have a look at these. Two big balls of fire in the sky. Well, technically it's not fire, is it? It's plasma. But that's a pretty awesome sight to behold. In fact, that's a screenshot. That's pretty cool. See, this is what I like about like exploring the galaxy. You never really know what you're going to run into. Um, like. There, there's been times when I've jumped into a system and I've, I, the entry point has literally been between two 
between two stars in a binary system. So uh, no one's ever been here before either. So let's scan these stars. Scan this one. If you look out in the distance, there's a very, very distant system. You know, most star systems in the galaxy are actually binary systems, two stars orbiting each other. How far away is that one? Oh, it's only 5,000 light seconds. Let's go scan that as well. So obviously uh, a light second is the distance travelled by light in one second. Um, for reference, the distance from the Earth to the Moon, I believe, is about 0 0.7 light seconds. I might be wrong on that. Um, the, the distance from the Sun to the Earth is 8 light minutes. We're what 4,000. I'm currently traveling 26 times the speed of light, which technically is impossible. But the uh, the way the frame shift drive works, you're not actually traveling. Space is traveling around you. Uh, there's a specific name for it. It's a it's a established concept in sci-fi. I'm sure Lorcan will be able to tell you what it's called. Where you've got the uh, uh, you have a, a a bubble in front of your um, ship which causes the space to fold around you and then um, when you reach your destination the bubble collapses and you you know what it's called Lorcan, you know space terminology That's the one. An Alcubierre drive. Okay, well that's here's a brown dwarf. Um, not much to see here, so let's head to the next system. Which is Another red dwarf system. A lot of red dwarf systems on the way. See those dark spots that you can see in the galactic plane? They're nebulae. Um, they're huge clouds of gas. Um, sometimes formed from the remnants of supernovas. Uh, sometimes they form stellar nurseries, where uh, the gas coalesces together to form new stars. Pretty cool, huh? Drip starter. Oh, lot of systems here. Let's have a look. What do we got? Uh, all unexplored. But they're a bit crap, so I'm not going to bother with those. Where are we off to next, eh? Yeah, I know, temperature critical, that's fine. Let's engage the friendship drive. Huh. 
the hell is I-dubs? Whoa, okay, brown dwarf there. Obviously can't scoop that. You know, it's, it kind of looks a bit like Jupiter, but it's um, it's not really radiating much light. It's technically it's a star, but it's kind of a failed star. I can relate. Uh, surrounded by rocky planetoids, which we don't care about, so... Where are we off to next? A K-class star. Uh, you can't name the system. Um, all the system names are based on NASA's naming uh, conventions, but um, s s certain in-game events cause like, system names to be chosen. Like there was a um, uh, one of the earliest explorers in the game um, led an expedition to the opposite side of the galaxy, 65,000 light years away. Um, and his ship was called the Beagle, uh, and so I, I, I think it's an in-game character that did this anyway. But so the uh, the system was renamed Beagle Point uh, in in his honour. Um, so uh, so there's that, and and Colonia, where I'm heading to, uh, that originally had a uh, a, a different name, um, but as it became like a new colony, they called it. Colonia, obviously. What do we got here, hey? Uh, reasonably close, so I'll scan that one at least. It's high metal content, so it's worth a little bit of money. You find that rocky planetoids are not really worth much money uh, when you sell their data to Universal Cartographics. Um, Water worlds worth a lot of money. Earth-like worlds are worth a ton of money. Um, I don't yet have any first to discover on Earth-likes. I do have some first to discovers on water worlds. Um, One cool thing is like if you're exploring with friends in a uh, in a group, um, if you all log the system uh, because you were part of a group, when uh, when you sell the data, all of you will get credit for first discovery, which is uh, which is pretty cool. I only found that out today. Well, those rocky planetoids don't actually have any atmosphere, so they'd need to sort that out somehow. I didn't even look to see what type of system we're jumping into here. That's uh, just another M class. Do, 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 do. Nope. Again. No one's ever been here before. Or if they have, they just didn't see fit to actually log it. Get past that star so I don't overheat when I engage the FSD. We have 70 jumps to go! Uh, someone wanted to rent uh, a GPU from one of my students so that he could mine Bitcoin. Rent a GPU? What? I think it's like, you know, 
Oh, I'm going to mine bitcoins. That, that's great, but you probably end up spending more money than the bitcoin is worth on the electricity to fuel the the mining farm. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Um, good. Yeah, Bit Bitcoin consistently goes up in value. It also consistently gets harder to mine, so the, the costs of mining it consistently go up as well. It's a false economy, it's a Ponzi scheme. Um, uh, right, we're heading toward another red dwarf. Uh, I'm going to take this opportunity to just um, go on a quick refreshment break, so I shall return.
Right. Uh, I have returned. Right. Um. Cool. Right. Um, am I? I think I was kind of in danger of flying into the sun there, so... Ow, 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 ow. If this comment isn't read in Carl's comment catch-up, TM, I'll donate $10,000 to Church of Scientology. Oh, Christ. How many... What's all these... Oh, there we go. Um, Carl, Carl, you're in an uncontrolled lateral roll. Oh! Coronal mass ejection! Although we missed the start of it, but you can see right there that's a whole bunch of crap being thrown out. Well, it's like the star vomiting into space. Um, pretty cool, huh? Uh, let me just check my thing. Um, someone sent me a text message. Um, I'll just send my mate there. Uh, good. So... Right, okay, so let's... Uh, did you ever read Absolution Gap by Alistair Reynolds? No. Uh, to, to date, the only Reynolds I have read was uh, Century Rain, which I absolutely adored. I own other Reynolds books, but I haven't actually read any. Um, I, you know... You know what it's like. My reading list is ridiculously huge, so um, I will. I'll get round to it eventually, you know. But you know, uh, we have sixty-eight jumps to go. Did you just put all star? Uh, I have a drink of um, Twining's Ginger Tea. Um, I'm not sponsored by Twining's. They're giving me no money for this whatsoever. Um, so until they give me money, I'm not going to tell you if it's good or not. Oh, it's another brown dwarf. Nine new objects. Let's check them out, shall we? They're all pointless rocky balls. So let's ignore that. I'm going to fly into the heat radius. No, I'm not. I've narrowly avoided that. Good, 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 good. You'll notice how the brown dwarf gives off a sort of like purplish glow. Um. <laughs> Adam Johnson, the king of humour. Um. So yeah, it is hot. I can't. I can't actually drink it. I don't. I've never understood how people are able to just like get boiling hot drinks and just neck them back. I can't do that. No, asbestos line throats or something. But I do have this squash. This is uh, su Tesco summer fruit squash. Or something. Tesco haven't paid me anything for this. Uh, so until they do, I'm not going to tell you if it's good or not. That's a bright one, isn't it? Okay. Scan this system. B -b 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 -system. Oh my god! No. I thought it was an Earth like, but it's not. But all of these look like mostly high metal content worlds, and so that's going to be worth a fair amount of money, especially as no one has been here before. So I'm going to go and scan all of these planets. So let's find the closest one first. And here we go. 
I'll come back and sco well, I nah, bollocks. I should come back and scoop the star, really, but um, uh, I, I can make the next jump without refueling. I do prefer to have a fuel, a full fuel tank. But the, the more, ironically, the more fuel you've got in your tank, the the uh, less far you can jump. Uh, but obviously, whenever you jump, it uses fuel, so it's a trade-off. What? Breakfast? What time is it? Where the hell are you? Are you on the other side of the planet? It's not fewer. Bling! That's that first one. These planets are quite well spread out, actually. I'm not sure I can be bothered to scan the whole system. Are you in Spain? It's still not... You'd have to be in... Where is it... Where Where would it be for, for it to be breakfast now? It's like 9p... You'd have to be in like, I don't know, Singapore or somewhere like that. Oh no! I wasn't paying attention! I've got to do the loop of shame again! That's twice tonight I've had to do the loop of shame. Twenty seventeen has been one hell of a decade. I I guess. One hell of a dickhead. Bling. Um. Oh. No, everything else is proper far away. I'm not sure I can be bothered for this. So, we are. We've logged a couple. We are going to jump to the next system. It's another red dwarf. Should be at a neutron star fairly soon, though. Maybe we can streak across the universe. Uh, another M class system. systems do we have in our system? What planets do we have in our system? Uh, some gas giants and a lot of the icy balls. You guys love icy balls. So I'll just scan this sun and then hop to the next planet. Next system. I should probably refuel. People say you should slow down when you're fuel scooping, but you know, I like to live on the edge. On the edge of the photosphere. Uh, fuel scooping complete. Let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> I just realised that you're singing the Red Dwarf theme tune. It's cold outside, there's no kind of atmosphere, I'm all alone, more or less. Uh, oh yeah. Ooh, what kind of system are we jumping into? 
something white or blue or something. It's the neutron star. Get a load of that. I will never get bored of looking at neutron stars. I think they're totally awesome. Uh, I'm going to have to get closer to it in order to scan it. The thing is, if you get too close, you get ruined by it. There we go. Uh, two other things in the system. Let's have a look at the specs on this neutron star. Oh, it actually weighs less than the sun. Although solar radius 0 0.000, 000 is, it's, it's a tiny thing. Um, it's not that it's not that old either in the grand scheme of things. Surface temperature 5 million Kelvin. Pretty hot. Uh, right, so now comes the fun part, guys. I've got to fly into these jet streams. At which point I'm going to totally lose control, but my frameshift drive is going to get overloaded, supercharged. Oh, God. I didn't quite make it. I've got to go back in. go, we are supercharged. And the next system is 103 light years away, which I can now jump to, because I've supercharged my frameshift drive. Here we go! Oh, God. Megan, if you're watching, thank you for that. So I think it's an A-class star, blue-white star, which is going to be fairly bright. Oh, no. It's just a white star. It's a Q Babylon 5 joke. Um, there, there is Newtonian ship movement if you turn off flight assist. Uh, so there's a number of people that will turn off flight assist in order to aid them. Uh, but in, in all honesty, it generally causes you to not be able to control your ship for beans. Um, but there are a lot of people that will turn off flight assist so that they can... Um, uh, uh, use the Newtonian flight model to. I mean, you can do the you know the the slide and stuff like that. But um, does the game always bring you out? the The game brings you out in the um, the center of mass of whatever system you are. Uh, or close to the centre of mass of whatever system you're jumping into. So, um, if you if you notice, there's there's two stars in this system, and it's brought me out uh, next to this one. Well, I'm nowhere near that one. Um, sometimes you'll have two stars orbiting each other, and it'll bring you out in the middle of the the two of them. Um, so, um, so yeah. But I mean, it's it's not skill on my part that's landing me near those stars.
you should see when you jump into um, the Beetlejuice or VY Canis Majoris system, it's fucking terrifying. Because um, the star is just absolutely enormous. You know, the, the radius, if it was at the centre of our solar system, the radius of the star would extend to Neptune. Um, that's how monstrously huge it is. And it makes this weird sound when you get close. It's, it's genuinely creepy. See, there we go. I'm not next to the star there. See? As if by magic. Um, you can see there's that star. It looks like we've got a weird binary system here. Um, what is that? It's just a planet. Let's scan it. Scan it, the planet. Dooby dooby doo. What have we got in this system? So we've got our star here. We've got a high metal content world there. Bunch of random crap planets. Um, so. Moving swiftly on. I should probably refuel at some point, but uh, right now I ain't gonna do that. That's gingery. I like my tea like I like my women. Ginger and hot. Okay, what have we got here? Two stars. Another unexplored system. There's a lot of unexplored systems. Ooh. No, they're just icy balls. A lot of icy balls tonight. And I'm not talking about the game. Uh, might scan those. It's only 15 light seconds away, so it should, should be a pretty much instant scan. Let's check it out. Now, um, the scanner takes uh, a variable amount of time depending on how far away you are from the object, how big the object is. Um, there are engineers that you can that you can use uh, to improve certain systems, like they can improve the jump range of your frameshift drive, and they can improve the the speed and range of your scanners. So uh, I think when I get back to the bubble, I'm going to search out these engineers and say, "Can you make my ship better?" You know. um, but for now, onwards and upwards. here is there not much here at all so let's scoop what we can and then get the hell out of dodge good 
60 jumps. <laughs> this isn't a shoot the yellow transformer situation here. This is a. Um, it's interesting, isn't it? There's 12 people watching and like two people writing anything in the comments. I wonder what everyone else is doing. We're sitting there going, this game's really boring, man. I find the game very relaxing. Obviously, there's ma many different ways you can play the game. I'm choosing to explore, but there's nothing stopping you from setting yourself up as a combat pilot or a or a pirate, as they say in Japan. Um, well, it's a weird-looking system, isn't it? I sort of messed up my chair. Okay, so we've got some gas giants. Looks like it's just icy crap balls. Bunch of rock and ice. Don't really care about. Um, what about these? There's a couple of stars down there. And that's, I think we're done here. Um, I've got messed up my system now. Uh, Oh, do you guys want to see what I look like as well? Let's have a look. Who's that guy? Who is that guy? Yeah, boy. Two dislikes now. What the hell? Who would dislike this? Look at that. That's worth a screenshot. Anyway, let's let's get on with it. Hippie Stephen Hawking. You know it. What? Who would dislike this stream? I don't understand. I bet they. If they. It's not like they commented saying, like, "Oh, I don't like this." He looks bored. No, he's just relaxed, man. He's just chilled. He's chilled out. What changed? Ba -bam. Do do. Open up the system map. Whoops, didn't mean to zoom in that quick. Don't care about any of this, so let's go. Oh. Good. Um, yeah, there hasn't been that many interesting systems for a while, uh, which is a shame. I saw some pretty awesome stuff before. Um, Obviously, something I said made them think, oh no, I, I actually like this. Uh, it's not a yellow transformer, it's a star. Pretty empty system. And 
on we go. Well, as I get closer to my destination, we're gonna uh, we're gonna actually enter a nebula. Uh, so uh, that's that's when things will start to get uh, pretty awesome. And also, this nebula, uh, the stars are very very tightly packed together. So that's going to be interesting. I'm, I can't can't think of anything I've I've seen which is which is similar. So that's going to be the sort of new experience for me. But as I get further away from the star, we'll be able to see um, right, the glow from the Milky Way. I think it might be that nebula there that we're actually headed towards. Uh, though I'm not sure about those ones. But uh, anyway, we'll we'll keep on going. So. Um, in pr it's probably going to be in about I don't know 40 jumps or something we shall start to see big clouds of colored gas which should be pretty fun so um, those of you in the uh, in England because it's it's not the whole of the UK is it have you been out in the snow today? You enjoy the, you enjoy the snow. Um, <laughs> it's got a text from my friend Megan, who presumably is watching still. I regret not hitting dislike when you changed to your character. Come on. It's got the Vietnam vet moustache and everything, man. So yeah, been out in the snow much. Enjoy snow. Is snow a thing that you that you enjoy? Snow, frozen water, uh, falling from the sky, snow, snow, snow. Uh, I went out and saw um, multiple uh, snow people. Uh, I would have said snowman, but as uh, Adam pointed out earlier today, let's let's not be hasty and assume the gender of. Um, any snow people that we see. Uh, the the big like that that big band that is the that's the band of the Milky Way. But I was referring to the tiny little. Um, uh, what if clouds are God vaping? Um, I was referring to the the, the cloud of, of stuff inside. Said um, uh, that was obscure in part of that. So obviously that that big band across the uh, across the sky that is that's the the disc of the Milky Way. Um, but I. I I'll see if I can point out the nebula that I think we're headed towards again. Squirted spray cream all over the snow. That's a uh, that's a th that's a thing to do. I I I guess that's a what like like squirty cream that you'd squirt onto like dessert and stuff like that. Is that a is that a thing? So anyway, I'm just going to I'm just going to get past the um, the glow of the of the of the star. So yeah, this big band that you see is um, the Milky Way. Uh, but if you see that black cloud there, that is a nebula. That is a nebula there, that thing. Uh, that is a nebula. Now, we're obviously not headed in that direction. Um, we are headed in this direction. But if you look carefully, there is what appears to be a nebula in that direction. So that is, that's where we're headed towards. Do you know what they call... Um, you know what the word for nebula is in Japanese? Nebula. Yeah, it's a pretty good, pretty good joke there. Nebula. Nebula. Right, off we 
we go. Huh. You know what? I'm I'm going to fly out to these two planets because they're, they're fairly close together. Like that's. Uh, they're not that close together actually. That's. I don't know. One thousand five hundred eighteen light seconds, and that's one thousand five hundred twenty-three seconds. I'm going there because that might be an interesting sight. So let's go and have a look at that. <laughs> Doppio! Doppio! Do you know what the Japanese word for triggered is? Triggered! When I come to Dublin, Lorcan, we've totally got to go to that Doppio shop. Just so that I can uh, order some sort of coffee based drink. Slow down! Never. I've got a massive headache right now. I've been feeling really ill all day. Um, but the, I think the game's helping me relax. So. I'm glad school's closed tomorrow, because otherwise I'd have to get up early and go into work feeling awful. Uh, but now I just have to get up early and stay at home feeling awful. So, we're approaching this planet. I'm hoping it's going to be a couple of planets pretty, pretty close together. There's an icy body. Ah, oh, they're not that close together. Not as close as those other two. I found those amazingly close planets before. But these are obviously orbiting each other, though. But yeah. Anyway, moving swiftly on. Oh, it's another neutron star. Let's see if it's a more angry neutron star than before. That's a fairly mellow neutron star. I say fairly mellow, it's still a killer. Uh, but some of them are like, you know, really, really angry. I hope we see a white dwarf, actually. I really like white dwarfs as well. They've got a similar appearance to the neutron stars. Okay, so that's that scanned. What else have we got in system? Got a neutron star. Hmm. How far away is that? Uh, I was hoping that there'd be a, a planet fairly close so we could sort of like land on the planet and then look up at the neutron star, but that's so far away the neutron star is going to be tiny. So, uh, Right, so let's fly into them jet streams though. Let's get supercharged.
There we go. 103 light year jump. We'll be there before you know it. got here nothing much no nothing much at all we've got 52 jumps to go let's get on let's get it on to blah AXJ eight two six two three. Engage. Okay, what have we got here? More rocky crap. We just we don't really care about. Right, where to now, my pretties? Oh, I think the live chat just disappeared. Or maybe it's just me. Nope, there it is. I agree White Dwarf was better in the 90s. Uh, I haven't actually read it for years. Um, but then I stopped buying Games Workshop products uh, back in the 90s as well. I mean, buying them new, I still bought some second hand off the internet. Ooh, those two are very close together. Let's check them out. Faster. Anyone dizzy yet? I'm totally going in the wrong direction. Um, what a bloody idiot. Uh, it was there, wasn't it? That's where we were going. Surrect! There we go. I'm expecting to see a couple of tiny little planets really close together. If I don't see that, I'm going to be disappointed. Let's not do the loop of shame four times in a nine.
So yeah. Okay. At the moment, doesn't look like there's. I think it's going to be one orbit in the other. Like one's going to be bigger than the other, but who knows? Let's find out. Let's get closer. Yes, look, they're very close. I mean, in astronomical terms, they're basically touching each other. Can't land on either of them, though, it would appear. So, that one's... What, about... Seven million meters away, that's five million meters away. I'm trying to get my bearings here. Oh, I see. So, yeah, pretty, pretty close together. But let's move on. Yes, we're definitely heading towards that nebula, aren't we? <laughs> How far away from Earth are we right now? Let's see. 15.8 thousand light years. So, um, a lot of people have asked me, oh, what's Elite Dangerous all about? And it's difficult. Like people say, oh, is it good? And I say, yeah, it's really good, but you have to be in the right sort of frame of mind. There's a, there's a lot of people that ask, oh, is this game good? And I want to say yes, but I know what they're like. And so I'd probably say, well, it's it's. I think it's good, but it's probably not for you. Um, so uh, there was a lot of people that loved No Man's Sky. Uh, there was a lot of people that hated No Man's Sky. Um, but uh, this is sort of like a, a I guess, a grown-up version of No Man's Sky in a sense. It's um, you're exploring. You're not just exploring a galaxy. You're exploring our galaxy. Uh, and it's a sort of scientifically realistic model as well. Um, so instead of landing on planets and finding life forms and all of that, like you land on planets and mostly find rocks. Um, there are some systems where there's like weird like life forms on there. Like there's these weird like pumpkin-shaped trees. I haven't seen them firsthand. I've just seen um, screenshots of what what people have discovered. And there's also there is a race of aliens called the Thargoids. Um, now, the developers said early interactions with the Thargoids would determine whether they were benevolent or hostile towards humans. How cool, another neutron star. Um, and uh, so, obviously, there's a lot of people on the forums that when the, when the Thargoids first started appearing, uh, people were saying, right, we've got to play this cool, let's not antagonise them and something like that um, of course then there's the American contingent uh, who were just like I got pulled out of hyperspace by a Thargoid and I shot him up I got my guns out and I shot his ass uh, but he didn't die and now they're probably going to hate the whole human race so we're all going to die uh, which is pretty much like the American foreign policy to be fair um so uh, so yeah Right 
Right, I'm supercharged. What else was in this system? There's quite a few things. Let's find out. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, so we've got a neutron star. Some high metal content worlds, but they're quite far away, so... Yeah, I'm not playing Minecraft. Uh, the other thing as well, I, I've never enjoyed Minecraft. I just, I just don't like the art style. I don't really like the style of game either. To be fair, uh, I don't like the concept of spending ages mining for resources, uh, only to have some annoying creature come along and destroy everything that you've built. You know, I mean, I don't mind mining for resources. I mean, you can mine an elite. You know, you can kit your ship out. Mine. Obviously, this is only one side of the game that you guys are seeing me play now. This is the exploration side. Um, I find it relaxing. I enjoy it. Um, there's a lot of people that find it boring and they hate it. Um, but there's combat as well. You know, I mean, I don't have any guns on this ship because that just adds extra weight, um, which reduces my jump range. Um, but if when I get back to the bubble, I'm totally putting guns on it and I'm going to go take up some bounty hunting contracts and I'm going to go and kill some kill some people. Oh. Mm. No, that's I don't know, it looks promising. Let's fly out to that. I think it's high metal content. I didn't think Notch got any money from Minecraft anymore since he sold it to Microsoft. Seven jumps to go. It won't be long before we're actually fairly close to that nebula, I reckon. So, um, yeah, we're going to get some eye candy there. No one tells me to slow down. world is too far out to be an Earth-like. It would be too cold. Yeah. Right. We could make it into a stream where we just like hate on people that deserve it, like PewDiePie um, and uh, Sargon of Akkad. Thanks, Lorcan, for that text message saying shoot the yellow transformer. Right, where are we at now? What's 
What's in this system, hey? Uh, some big stars and a big gas giant. Don't really care about that. So let's scan this star and then move swiftly on. Forty six jumps to go. I want to send you a text. Well, unfortunately, in order to send me a text, you would need to have my phone number. And you yeah, don't, so. You have to send me a message instead. Or you can pretend <laughs> to send me a text, and I can, I can pretend to look at my phone. Um, or whatever. Jump into a brown dwarf, which means won't be able to scoop fuel. <laughs> so it's just going to be a John can move on, I think. Uh, there's many, many people that know me in real life, and they don't have my phone number. Um, Another brown dwarf. I hope we don't get stuck in too many rows of brown dwarfs because I need to refuel. The stars do seem to be getting fairly more densely packed. Do you know what I mean? Look, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of pricks of light around here. Worthwhile in this system? No. So we will move on. What a sob story. What's a sob story? The fact that I know people and they don't have my phone number. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, whoops. Didn't mean to do that. Uh, right. On to the next system. Oh no, wait, I should I should refuel first. Come, let me scoop you. Whoa! Almost lost it. Get away from this. What a sob story. Amazing. Oh, don't fly into the sun. Don't fly into the sun. Um, be like Voyager. What? Be like, like the third worst Star Trek s series, I guess. Um, be like Voyager. Uh, do you want me to go on the holodeck? 
do you want me to have like a run of episodes where Tom Paris and Harry Kim like you know relive like the glory days of 1920s space opera no no one needs to be like Voyager Another neutron star. You guys are getting quite a treat when it comes to the neutron stars. This is this is. Um, th there's more. I've, I've seen more neutron stars on this leg of the journey than I did like the whole of the rest of the way here. Uh, what do we got? Nothing worth scanning. Um, First discovered by a devious hyena. Okay. So let's get supercharged. I, I did once try to be like Voyager and fly through the rings of a, of a ringed planet. Um, but um, all that happened was it pulled me out of Super Cruise. And then um, uh, obviously... The rings are made of like tons of rocks and shit, so um, I, I nearly died. Um, so, yeah, the neutron stars do look very good. White dwarfs look really good as well. If I if I if I've got time when I reach my destination, I might have a scout around to see if there's any white dwarfs in the area because they look really nice as well. I don't think I've ever seen a wolf riot star. Uh, they're closer to the galactic core, but maybe we'll happen across one of those if we're lucky. Who knows? Right. So, how far is this jump going to be? Oh, only 55, 65 light years? Uh, but we're jumping to another neutron star. This is like the neutron highway. Um, earlier today, I found a system which had uh, three neutron stars in it, in the same system, and a black hole. Uh, the black hole was fairly terrifying. Um, so, the black holes are really rare. Maybe we'll have them across one. Whoa, this is one of those angry neutron stars I was telling you about. Yeah! He's really mad, isn't he? He's really, really mad. I guess we should scan that. I'll see if I can get any stats on that neutron star for you. See how it differs from the others. Um, so... Uh, let's have a look. Solar radius, so it's it's tiny. It's a tiny neutron star. Uh, it's almost as heavy as the sun. Um, so yeah, there you go. That's all all about neutron stars for you. So now. Let's get supercharged. Seems scarier than before. Whoa, I don't like that one. I can't actually get out of the... Oh my god. Yeah, now is the time to leave the... Oh. Right, that was dangerous. Let's just. I just want to actually double check that my frame shift drive isn't totaled. It's at 91%. I should be able to make this jump, but then I'm gonna. I might actually repair it. Um, yeah, that's a that that was a more scary neutron star. Oh, it looks like we jump into another neutron star. Three in a row. Three 
three in a row. I didn't think I was going to get out of that uh, out of the neutron cone that time. That was quite worrying. Uh, this one's a little bit more mellow. What's actually in this system then? We've got a neutron star. Um, ooh. That looks like a water world. We're going to check that out. Uh, some high metal content worlds. How far away is that? Uh, 76,000. Might be worth it. Um, and I can repair the frame shift drive while we're on the way. So. <laughs> yeah, note to self, don't um don't try and repair your frame shift drive while you're actually using the frame shift drive. Jesus Christ. What an idiot. Um right, let's now we can repair it, right? Yeah, auto field maintenance units uh, are pretty much a, a requirement for any sort of long distance travel. You can see um my uh, my modules are they're not none of them are a hundred percent except for the detailed surface scanner and the data link scanner uh, but if you if you have a module failure then you know you you're just gonna die uh, you know, so it's really important that you keep your frame shift drive online and your life support and stuff like that obviously um, so I've got two auto field maintenance units. Uh, if necessary, they can repair each other. So that's that's pretty cool. So we'll get that back up to 100%. Good, um, and so I should probably turn that back on now. Right, here we go. Minor mishap there. So 16 times the speed of light. I think the fastest I've had it up to was, uh, I think, 1,200 times the speed of light. That was a really long distance within this. It was like, um, it was like a quarter of a light year, but it was within the same system, so I couldn't use the frame shift drive. Um, I mean, I couldn't use the the jump drive. I, could, I had to use Super Cruise. Um, and that that took a long time, but I managed to get the the speed up to a ridiculous, you know, significant uh, multiple of the speed of light. Uh, what does 16 times the speed of light mean? Right, don't don't know. If this is a water world, this is going to net me a fair amount of cash. 
Um, and by Waterworld, obviously, I don't mean that terrible Kevin Costner movie. <laughs> we're not going back to the future. This is We're in the future right now. I'm going to make a film called Forward to the Past. It's going to be about regressive people on the internet. There's a whole lot of stars around here, way more than I'm used to seeing. It's very starry. It was a dark and starry night. No, what is it? Dark and stormy night, that's the thing. 16 times the speed of light is 4 times the speed of light times 4. Okay, where where are we going with this? What what does that what does I mean in real terms? So yeah, it's taken a while to get here. The, the, <laughs> the kicker is that once I scan this planet, I've got to head back to the neutron star so I can supercharge my frame shift drive. where we find out it's just a icy ball or something. <laughs> icy planet. 16 is 4 squared. Yeah, I... Do you actually have a point that you're you're working towards here, or is this just another one of those... Um, it's like the TV show Lost. You know, where it was like, ah, oh, we could do this, and we could do this, and keep them guessing, keep them guessing, and it's like... There was no actual plan or end goal in sight. There's some Star Trek reference about there being four lights. Well, we should be at this planet in no time. Like, less than a minute. <laughs> Stop saying that! Stop saying the same thing in, in different ways. Foursquare. Why would you want an app that tells people where you are? Unless you could, like, say you could you could get it to tell people like where you where you were, but like you know make it lie so people thought you were somewhere else, so you wouldn't have to deal with them. You know.
It could be good for stalkers. Yeah, that's why it's a terrible idea. Unless you're the sort of like advertising it for stalkers, you know. What if I told you there was an app <laughs> that would tell me where your child is at any time and there was nothing you could do about it? Would you be very interested or very interested? <laughs> Uh, for reference, that was a quote or a misquote from Silicon Valley after Jared's been stuck on a, in a shipping container on an automated platform for Christ knows how long. Welcome back, Titan. If that is your real name. Uh, you missed out on like tons of neutron star related action but in a sec I'm going to be flying back to a neutron star so I can supercharge my engines and get the hell out of here but I've got to scan this planet first because I think it's going to make me mad bank <laughs> we don't care why you want rats we just we just get you rats, stat. <laughs> Yay, water world! That's gonna give me some money. Don't think anything else around here is worth scanning, really. Uh, so now I've got to fly all the way back to that neutron star. Uh, so that's gonna take another few minutes. Is Thunderball 666 your real name? No, of course not. My real name is Thunderwolf Smith. <laughs> of the Croydon 666s, yes. Why Croydon? A friend of mine used to go to school with the uh, with the singer from Napalm Death, Johnny Napalm. It's <laughs> uh, from no, from fairly near here, like you know, a Birmingham Stourbridge way. But um, obviously, Johnny Napalm isn't his real name. His real name is Ian. Napalm. <laughs> uh, but no, on a serious note though, I did used to teach the son of one of the guys from Bolt Thrower, which is pretty cool. Like, um, you know, parents' evening saying, oh, well, you know, your son usually works hard, but, you know, every so often the class can descend into a realm of chaos. Yeah? Yeah. Maplin <laughs> confirmed. Yes, Maplin. Carl Smith's not my real name. It's a uh, it's a fake name I use um, in order to appear human. Slow down. No one tells me what to do. I'll never slow down. Well, I will. I'll slow down when I get close to the um, when I get close to the neutron star. Because I've got to slow down, otherwise I'll smash into it, and then like you know that that'll be it. I'll get mad. So when we get there. I will slow down, then I'll fly into the jet cones, and then we will get the hell out of Dodge. 40 more jumps. We've got to be getting close to that nebula now. I mean, the fact that there's all these stars around shows that we're getting closer to the uh, to the, the, the star cluster. So,
My real name is Captain Spectacular. Ziltoid's arch nemesis and half brother. I'm not going to stop until I actually get to the location. This is taken. I'd probably be there if it wasn't streaming. I'm just like taking these little extra excursions to please the viewership. Hope they appreciate it. I think when I jump to the next system, I'm going to have to take another refreshment break so I can leave it spinning in space for you again. Unless it's in a particularly dangerous area, in which case I won't. spent longer in this system than I intended. I have to turn up my central heating as well, it's starting to get a bit cold. I wonder if it's still snowing. So what about Donald Trump? That's what I thought. What do they eat at a vegan barbecue? Um, when when you say they, what do you mean? Do you mean what do vegans eat at a vegan barbecue? Um, Linda McCartney um, burgers are pretty damn good. Um, that's what I have. Uh, Linda McCartney sausages as well. They go well on a barbecue. You can also get some... Uh, Violife have started doing a... Um, uh, they call it Violife Mediterranean Block. It's sort of like, you know, it's vegan cheese, but it's, it's sort of vaguely analogous to halloumi. It tastes pretty good, so you can grill that as well. And then bung it in a wrap or something with some sweet chilli sauce. Um, what other things work? Um, uh, you could make kebabs, like, you know, get some uh, like peppers and mushrooms and tofu. Uh, stick them on a stick and grill them. Uh, you know, all sorts of stuff. <laughs> right, we're almost at this star, and then we will hop on to the next system, and I will go to the toilet, but obviously not, not in my seat. You know. Um, if you're doing the tofu. Um, uh, kebabs, I'd recommend marinating the tofu in. Uh, maybe marinate the tofu in teriyaki seasoning. Um, Kickerman do a, a pretty good teriyaki sauce uh, with sesame seeds in there. Uh, so that's you know that that's worth looking into. Um, Not. Well, you're just going to have to mutiny then. 
walking because I'm not streaming myself going to the toilet. There will be a stream, but that's not something that you guys get to see. Coming up on this Neutron Star now. It looks so pretty from a distance. Look at that. So, let's head into those jet streams. Get supercharged. Sarah Burton isn't a nice person. That's, that's a pretty awful thing to say. I think she's a pretty nice person. What's, why, why, would you, why would you say that? She deleted all her YouTube videos. So? They're her videos. She can do what she likes. I made most of my videos private um, because uh, I didn't want people seeing them at this uh, at, at the moment. Uh, so it's just the streams that I've kept on. So. Uh, yeah, there's a number of people found out uh, my YouTube account details and. Um, So there's a number of people that don't really understand uh, the the humour, uh, and it's caused hassle. So, uh, so yeah. Right, I'm just gonna put this in fuel scooping mode. Uh, I'll check the map as well. Doesn't really look like there's much worth scanning. So, um, you guys can have uh, an external view. Do you want the front or the back view? You've got the front view there, or the back view there. Or you can have an internal view. Do you want, you, there you go. You, I'm not going to be at my desk, but uh, you can... Oh, no, it's still going to... Back view. Oh, that's cool as well. I didn't realise there was a side view. Let's screenshot that. Um, that's from the back of my cockpit view. That's pretty cool. Uh, let's have. Um, yeah, that that's a pretty cool looking view. So we'll have that one. Right. Yeah. Uh, right, I'll be back in two secs. Oh, this is going to mess up now, isn't it?
here we go. Uh, oh, I should probably switch back to the actual viewpoint. <coughs> um, right. Are you in an aeroplane? You have returned, my liege, yes. <laughs> yes, I have! Back again. Uh, oh, we're quite far away from the from the star now. What else was in this system? Is there anything good in the system? Uh, no. So we are jumping the hell out of here. Thirty-nine jumps to go! Getting closer and closer. So it's got a text off Megan saying dislike again. Don't know why. What's to dislike? Do you have the blood to sacrifice? I don't know what that means. Um, I feel like I may have gotten mixed up in the wrong thing. Whatever, let's let's scoop some fuel and jump to the next system. Yeah, temperature critical. I've got some more tea by the way. And I've just had two ibuprofens as well. Probably won't fix my headache, but you know. Uh, if you're a vegetarian but you want KFC, my advice is don't get KFC, uh, and um, that's that's pretty much it. That's the advice. <laughs> so uh, Megan disliked because I changed the character view, and she regretted not disliking uh, last time I did it. So um, thanks for that, Megan. Where are we at now? Did I finish honking? I'm going to make a game called Space Goose, where it's basically like this, but you fly a... you fly a giant goose. What do you reckon? You reckon there's a market for that? What if you're a vegan and you want a steak? Um, in, in that situation, I'd probably say don't have the steak. Um, so there's that. bread while smelling steak. <laughs> I'd play Space Goose. Everyone would play Space Goose. I think it'd be a fucking brilliant game. I don't really know much... I can't think of much more of a concept other than um, you're a goose in space. Um, don't know if it needs much more of a concept than that, to be fair. Um, Alright, what do you reckon? Right, that drink was too hot and I just read Space Goose Coose to Coose and it made me almost piss myself and, and spill tea all over my face. <laughs> Fight the pseudo-dragon. You gotta watch out for pseudo-dragons, man, though. They're nasty, nasty creatures. They're not like dragons. They're not quite dragons, but, you know...
A lot of systems here. Um, but they're all just rocky balls. Balls of rock. Rather fight Cthulhu. What, as a goose? Goose versus Cthulhu. Do you reckon a goose could take on Cthulhu and survive? Geese are pretty hench. Uh, not long after I moved into my house, uh, I was driving home uh, and uh, at the top of my street that there was a goose just sat in the road. It wouldn't move. It was This was about midnight. You know, it's just like middle of the road goose. Um, it's quite a bizarre sight. It, it wouldn't even move when I beeped my horn at it. You know. Anything worth scanning except the star. And I've scanned it, so. On to the next system. Dagon doesn't rhyme with wagon, though. Unless you call it the fart wagon. <laughs> this is pretty good hip hop right here. There's tons of weird stuff in my brother's van. A single high heel and an empty paint can. A bass amp wrapped in my parents' old sheets and 50... 50 what? 50 CDRs of super crappy hip-hop beats. Sounds like a pretty good van. Where are you getting this, like, is this, <laughs> is this because I suggested uh, that um, Lovecraft themed um, hip hop act? Oh, God, I can't even remember what I, what I called it. What was that, what was that Lovecraft themed hip hop act? Oh, it's like, Shub Nigger Rap or stuff, it wasn't it? <laughs> oh, shub shub nigger rap. Oh, that's not racist because it's from the Shub Niggerath, the, uh, the goat with a thousand young. jumps we've got. 32 jumps! Okay, the end's like reasonably close now. I say reasonably close because I'll probably get distracted by some other stuff on the way. Oh, I've got such a headache.
Awful YouTube junk. Well, enjoy that. Have fun with your awful YouTube junk. I, it's nice to know that this doesn't count as awful YouTube junk. The secret god of YouTube. I don't. I don't really think that's the case. You know, with my 300 subscribers or whatever, that's not really. Uh, it's not really godlike. And you know, my uh, videos that amass a whopping 57 views. You know. Uh, so uh, when I say it, uh, reasonably close, I envisage being uh, there in the next half hour or so. Maybe just under half an hour. Especially if I end up in systems like this, because it's just a case of honk and jump. Those stars are getting denser, they're getting closer together, there's more of them. We're obviously getting close to our destination. Or as they say in Birmingham, close to the destination. <laughs> oh god, don't start. <laughs> what does it mean, Lorcan? What does what does it mean? Ah, oh, another neutron star! In a massive field of bright stars. That's a screenshot waiting to happen. Uh, let's just do an external view of that, and um, we can get some... Let me get a nice... Got the neutron star, the Milky Way in the background. There we go. All right, let's let's get supercharged. Oh god, not the legend 27. <laughs> the legend 27. Remember when that was literally everywhere? Lorca, new president of maths. Don't don't encourage him. <laughs> well, we the names of the star systems that we're entering now are. Uh, uh, congruent with the uh, the name of the star system that we're heading to so we're definitely getting close I'm telling you don't encourage Lorcan he's never he's literally never gonna <laughs> yeah he's never gonna let this go.
28 jumps. You can never let go of his birthright. I'm telling you, man, it's like... I'm never going to hear the end of this. I've got to stay with him for a week at Christmas, and he's just going to be lording it over me like he's president. God's sake. He is not president. He's president of nothing. If you keep saying he's president, then things are going to just end up bad. I believe you're going to do it as well. God's sake. Uh. <laughs> I'm president of Antifa. Uh, I thought that was uh, H-Bomber guy. I thought he was president of Antifa. Which is totally a thing, by the way. Uh, I believe you'll find that my church is called Two Carl's Church of Nihilism. It was established 2007, was it 2007, Lorcan, we established Two Carl's Church of Nihilism? Um, or we were going to establish it, but then we couldn't see the point. He's not coming around mine, I'm going around his. It's going to make it even worse. It'll be in his house. <laughs> God's sake. Not this, no, this is not democratic in any sense.
democracy is for idiots. I completely agree. Democracy is for idiots. Um, it far a far superior system is for um, <laughs> presidents of the universe to be elected by a couple of random people declaring it so on a YouTube stream that uh, 14 people are watching. Um. Uh, I would quote uh, Spider Jerusalem on voting right now, but um, I can't remember everything he says. Carl always speaks the truth. What are you talking about? So you can't handle the truth. No truth handler, you. I doubt your truth handling responsibilities. Are responsibilities? No capabilities. This is the starriest place that ever starred. 23 jumps. Not long to go now. Man, what's with all these dead systems? Engage. <laughs> I never declared you president of maths. Oh, how many jumps we got now? We got 21 jumps to go. We got 21 jumps to flow. <laughs> Look, this is wrong. I shall fight on the front lines for you. This is just what is even going on now. This was supposed to be like a relaxing exploration theme and people were supposed to chat about stuff. Um, but now it's just like turned into some sort of Lord of the Flies situation. Didn't the beast turn out to be like some dead guy on a uh, on a mountain top? Lorcan's the conch. It's 
spoken like a true leader. Can you make the fight like the uh, the fight between those two bears in um, uh, Northern Lights by Philip Pullman? Um, Yorick Bjornsson and uh, Jotha Ragnarsson. You know, where they fight and one of them punches the other one's jaw off and then tears his heart out and eats it. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty brutal. The neutron star. Ooh, lot of lot of planets in this system. Um, none of them really worth bothering with. So let's get supercharged. Let's get supercharged and then fly off to our next destination. Uh, we only have 18 jumps to go, so we are very and uh, nearly there. What is it with you and spray cream? Go on, get back in the jet stream, Carl. God's sake. Good. Whoa, don't fly into the star! Oh, looks like we're doing a double neutron hop here. Peasant. What's a peasant? <laughs> I'm Lorcan's second in command. Interesting. Bubba the goat discovered that. Right, let's... Jump into another neutron star. What's this? Three in a row? Is this three in a, low, a row? <laughs> I don't even know what fighting, bizarre battle is going on in the comments right now. It's very odd. Let's get neutroned. in this system. Um, how far away is that? Well, <laughs> I'm not, certainly not travelling 444,000 light seconds. 
Oh, right, well, what is next? Oh, no! This is bad. This is very, very bad. We're too close to the neutron star. We're going to get very hot and very dead unless we can escape very quick. I'll wait for the frame shift drive to... I bet we've got a pretty good view of it though. Yeah, it's a pretty good view. But um, we, ain't, we ain't doing that now. If you drop out in the... Um, if you drop out inside the jet streams, you, you're dead. So let's not do that. Uh, let's align with the escape vector, though. Oh, God. Uh, it's too hot, I'm dropping a heatsink. I'm dropping a heatsink, please. Um. Alright, actually drop a heatsink now. Right. Good. Um, right, my frame shift drive is supercharged. We are heading to this place. Oh, what? I've got to actually... I've got to charge my frame shift drive again. Okay, let's... Let's try it again. Try not to die this time. Now we're supercharged. Let's actually get the hell out of here. And we'll jump into a red dwarf so I can scoop some fuel. So is uh, what happened to Titan? Is he is he dead now? Is he? There's some, there's some weirdness going on. much in this system and there isn't so let's scoop some fuel and get the hell out of here Fifteen jumps. We'll do this in no time. <laughs> Rusted iron blade. That's like... Is that like a starter weapon or something?
pan. I've absolutely no idea what's going on in the comments. I blame Lorcan for all of this. <laughs> well, some people did once describe us as clones way, way back in 2001 or something on the authority forums. I'm not even scanning this star, I'm just going to the next one. Because I am getting tired and I want to get there before I go to bed. I described us as clones, did I? I don't... I don't remember doing that. I thought it was someone else described us as clones. Do 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 eleven jumps left. like a water world, so I'll probably go and scan that. Complete. Scan this planet and then jump across and then only ten jumps left. And then I'll land at the station, I'll send, sell all of this exploration data I've gathered. I'll be a rich, rich man.
There we go. Now you can see we're getting closer to that nebula now. of high leader Lorcan. You know, Lorcan has a leader as well. You realise that, don't you? A lot of crap in here. Ten jumps left, though. Um, no, nothing worth scanning. Good, let's go. Here we go, voyage of time. It's about as close as I could get to it without dropping out of Super Cruise being too close to the star. Who's your leader? Tom Bloke. It's very important that you see this. This is one of the greatest things that's ever existed. It's a uh, ladybird, which uh, me and Megan won at Milton Keynes playing games, like arcade games and winning tickets. We've got this and we've got a lobster. So, I thought it was necessary for you guys to see that. <laughs> Fake news, indeed. I wonder if I could fly through this solar prominence. Slow down. Yes. Everyone's always super critical. Come on, temperature. Drop, drop, drop. Good. Is this nine jumps left? Yes. those. On to the next one. Mm, 
<laughs> yeah, what's with these homies dissing my girl? You know, Lorcan looks just like Buddy Holly. <laughs> oh, man. I don't care what they say about us anyway. I don't care about that. <laughs> wow, whole load of stars in this. Load of stars all up in this system. Look at that. Starfest 2017. I imagine a lot of the system's going to be like that, given how just how dense this star field has become now. And considering we are seven jumps out. Got to go build a snowman at midnight. Well, we should be touching down round about midnight, so, um, you know, maybe a, a couple of minutes past midnight. Well, there's only, what, six jumps left, so, you know, if you could just hold on for six jumps. Another neutron. Five jumps. Reasonably packed out system. Let's see what's in it. Nothing really. 
So, let's get supercharged. Four jumps left, we are so almost there. Let's get soup charged, that's exactly what I said. Campbell's condensed neutron soup. Let's scan this star. We are so nearly there. So nearly there. I can almost feel it. Three jumps. going to be a bright blue white star i believe that's oh, just a white one shows promise though nope nothing but disappointment don't even need to scoop the fuel i can't be bothered to scan the thing so we've got like two jumps left Star's pretty big. Two jumps left. Two jumps left. Here we go. Don't you know what? I'm just going to drop a heat sink and go for it. Uh, well done, Nat, for arriving, like, literally, like, two jumps from the end. Um, you've missed you've missed a whole string of neutron stars. Uh, you've missed a planetary landing. Uh, you've missed a couple of water worlds. Um, but who knows? The, this penultimate system might be awesome. No, it looks fairly standard. Let's find out, shall we? Let's see what is in the system, though. No, just dead rocks. So I'll scan the star. And let us now make the final jump. And then we can dock at the system. We can sell this data. Star. 
So, I was expecting to see more of a glow from the nebula, to be honest, but um, whatever. Um, I don't know, you can you can kind of you see that, that glow around us now. Looks kind of cool. It's going to look pretty ace when we land on the planet, I reckon, so. Here we go. Jump into the system. The final jump final jump in a very long series of jumps over the... I think we travelled about 3,000 light years tonight, so... Um, it's a lot of... a lot of... a lot of, lot of jumps. Right. Here we are. So if I'm oh, hang on. Oh, this ain't good. This is this is not this is not the system that we're supposed to be in. Uh, shit. Right. Good. Um, there should be. No, we're in. We are in the wrong place. So let me just check my nav route here. Uh, let's go to the galaxy map. So I obviously clicked on the wrong thing. Okay, so it's only a. Uh, I think it's one more jump. Cool. Yeah, one more jump. Here we go. Well, that was uh, that was a little bit of excitement, wasn't it? I was not lost in space. Um, here we go, this time. So we should end up with a nav beacon that I can scan, and then we'll go and find the, uh, find the starport. What's it called? Something Harbour. Can't remember what it's called. We'll go and find it, and then we will land, we'll sell some data, and then I will go to bed. Okay, yes, nav beacon, lock destination. Let's honk as well. So when you end up in an actual populated system, which is a novelty for you guys because you've only ever seen me travelling through nothing, um, there will be a nav beacon which contains details of all of the planets and everything. So the idea is you drop out a super cruise near the nav beacon. Oh look, there's some other people. Um, you drop out near the nav beacon, uh, you scan the nav beacon, and then that gives you all the information you need, and then you go and find the place where you want to go. So. Um, should see some other ships at this nav beacon. Wrong place, lol. Yeah. the actual nav beacon. Up here somewhere. There. There we go. I have the system data. You want to see another ship? 
Just to prove that they do actually exist. Oh, I'm being scammed by the cops, by the looks of things. There's Ian Hill. Wow, I was actually scanned by a pirate and he let me go. Okay, cool. Got Ian Hill. Let's go and check him out. What's he in? A Type 6. It's a transport vessel. wonder where he's off to. Anyway, let's um, find the... Uh, here we go. Down here. Bling. Uh, actually, no, I want to actually zoom in on the planet's surface. Polo Harbour. That's what we want. Bookmark location as well. Let's go and land. Um, so landing on um, at spaceports on planets is actually a little bit trickier than landing on space stations for I guess obvious reasons. Um, getting the right uh, approach uh, can be a pain in the ass. Um, I haven't quite mastered it yet, but uh, we'll see how it goes. So, I mean, you saw what it was like me landing on that uh, rocky planet uh, before, but the problem is you've got to, obviously we need, it doesn't, if, if you're not actually landing on a, on a place, then, um, you know, it, it's easy to sort of just land wherever you want, but when you actually got a specific place that you need to land, you want to end up so that you're fairly close to it. And if I'm coming in a little bit too hot here, but see, it's like 200 kilometers away, and I've got to actually—I don't want to be that far away from it. I want to aim to come in at around. Um, Aim to come in at around uh, seven kilometers. That's when I can request docking permission. So, entering the atmosphere or the not atmosphere, because it's like not actually the atmosphere. Ooh, going in way too fast, way too fast, way too fast, way too fast. Okay, that wasn't too bad actually. In fact, that was a pretty good approach. Uh, it's obviously Lorcan's homeworld by the sounds of things. Right, where is pad 7? Where is Pad 7? Oh god, I'm speeding. There's Pad 7. I'm going to have to take a long way around.
anywhere near the pad is the question, not quite. Touchdown! Right, welcome to Polo Harbour. Let's check out the starport services. Well, first of all, let's uh, refuel, repair and restock. Uh, next, let's um, sell this data. So, did a fair amount of exploring. Um, not as much as I normally do. I'm expecting to get maybe two million or something from it. It really wouldn't be funny if it crashed now. And I, what are you doing now? Okay, cool, cool. Um, <laughs> don't do this. Why would you do this? Oh god. There we go. Right. Oh, 4 mil. That's pretty good. Let's confirm that. Incoming message. What is the incoming message? Congratulations. You are first to discover all of these places. That's quite a lot. I mean, most of them are just like rocky planetoids, but you know, I don't care. Now they've got my name next to them. That was a bit water world, I think, that um, 188 grand extra. Uh, wow, that's a hell of a lot of first discoveries. Um Okay, th th that was a lot of f Oh, and I've got another page to sell as well. So there's a total of 6 million that I've made here. So let's confirm that there. Uh oh, what is this? What's this I see? It's good. Got to uh Yay. First to discover these places as well. Just call me Dr. Livingstone or something. Wow. I don't actually remember scanning that many planets. Okay, cool. Close that. And another page! About half a million there. Wonderful. More first discoveries. Well, that was pretty nice. I can't sell this data because you need to be at least 20 light years away. So, um, so let's exit. I've now got 40 million in the bank. I'll be able to afford that um, luxury liner that I was planning on doing. I was, when I got back to the bubble, I was planning on buying a luxury liner and, and giving like passenger doing some passenger missions. I mean, if you look at these, these are the sorts of missions that you get in the passenger lounge. Um, they want to go to this place and collect data from the ice geysers and they pay 16.7 million credits for it. Um, I imagine that would be quite a long way away. Um, Boston's wreck gas vents. And again, twenty twenty three million there. Um, Nebula's heart. You know. So there's there's some there's some pretty cool looking um, looking things that you can um, 
that you can do, but you need decent rep. Um, so, let's just exit that because... No! No! Ah! It's crashed. The game has crashed and now the uh, Deus Ex Mankind Divided thing has appeared. Right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to load the game up again because there was a message that I wanted to see. I don't know why the game crashed. That That's, that's bummed me out. You're a data. Euro data. Right, let's just. Um, can't connect to the frontiers. Oh, there we go. Uh, I, those of you that care, I play on Mobius because uh, I don't want PvP dickheads killing me. Because um, I find that PvP attracts the worst kind of people. So, so there's that. Right. I just want to find out what that message is. I suspect that my exploration rank has uh, has, has improved. Uh, I was a pathfinder before. Let's find out what I am now. <laughs> so we've got ranger. Yeah. Great work, Commander. Your exploration ability reflects the future of the Pilots' Federation, this new golden age of human expansion. We've promoted your exploration bank to Ranger. Well, that's pretty fucking awesome, isn't it? So, um, how am I? How am I looking at the moment? I've got, um, I've got uh, a Ranger rank. I have got. Um, a lot of influence with the Colonia Council, which is nice. Um, I have over 40 million credits in the bank, which when you consider I started off with 5 million before I set off, I think I've done pretty well. Um, what do we got here? Credit spent on ships, 7 million. Credit spent on outfitting, 12 million. Total claim costs. Let's have a look at my exploration stats. So we are currently 17,500 light years, give or take, from Earth. Um, I've been to over a thousand different systems. I've made nearly 40 million credits from exploring. Um, that's pretty... That's pretty awesome. Um, in fact, um, uh, if I just consult the great oracle here, um, It might actually. Uh, does it tell me how many systems discovered first? Does that tell me my systems discovered first? Is that actually doing anything? Uh, that's the top 100 of everyone. I'm trying to find out how many first discoveries I've got under my belt. Um, 363. I've made 363 first discoveries. Um, so that's that's pretty cool. Um, but anyway, uh, I've, I've, I just have one more leg of my journey um, to Colonia, uh, which I will probably do tomorrow. Uh, once I get to Colonia, I don't really know what I'm going to do, because that's sort of been my mission over the last week. Um... So we, I guess we'll, I guess we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, I'd like to be able to outfit my ship, but I don't think they have particularly great parts in Colonia. Obviously, being a, 
a very distant colony so I might head back to the bubble and get out my ship I might just carry on to the galactic core um, but that's something I'm gonna have to think about so anyway thank you for watching um, I appreciate I've been streaming for I don't know how long uh, my headache isn't quite as bad it is snowing again outside um, so I am going to stop streaming now um, and I'm gonna go to bed I highly recommend that you guys go to bed as well um, so yeah thanks for watching thanks for keeping me company on this long journey um, and uh, I shall see you next time <laughs>